Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments. And in this video, I want to talk about creating recurrent meetings in Outlook, but via Excel VBA. I would highly recommend that you watch the first video where I talk about creating, you know, meetings from Excel VBA. But just to recap quickly, first thing would be to add a reference to your projects and to the module. So you just do tools and, you know, references, and you need to add a reference to Outlook. The only reason I personally did this or do it sometimes is just so that I can have access to IntelliSense, the methods and the properties of the objects. Once you have that, you really just create a variable for, you know, the Outlook application, you create a variable for the appointment, and then you then set the various properties that you would typically set when you're setting up, you know, a meeting, which would be like the recipients, you know, who will be optional, who will be required, what's the start time, how long is the meeting going to last, am I going to have a reminder before the meeting starts, how important is the meeting so that it can be tagged appropriately, what do I want to put in the body of the meeting invite, what attachments do I want to include if I'm including any, you know, where is the meeting taking place, so stuff like that, that's really what I've done here, but I would link up um, the first video here so you can watch that. So what we want to do now is to now add, you know, recurrence to um, the invite. So if we want to set up maybe a meeting that is going to occur daily from now to a certain time or monthly or weekly or however, that's really what we want to get into. But the first thing I want to show you is how it looks like on the Outlook end. So let's run this first of all, just to create that meeting invite first of all. I'm not using dot send, I'm using dot display so you can see it. So when you look at it now, this is the meeting, right? You can then set, you know, recurrence, okay? So if you look at this window, this is really what we are going to be programming from VBA. So you can see that there are a couple of options. There's daily, there's weekly, there's monthly, there's yearly, right? And you have, um, you know, when the pattern should start when the pattern should end, or you could decide to go by number of occurrences. If you don't want to go by, um, you know, when it should end, you could just say start at this time and occur 30 times to figure out when it should end. Or you can choose no end date. So it's more or less just an infinite, you know, um, invite, so to say. And then within, you know, the weekly, the monthly, you can choose, of course, which day this is going to occur. If you go to monthly, you can see that you can specify that it should even not just happen on a specific date, but it could be like, you know, fourth or second Tuesday of every month, stuff like that. You know, the same thing for the year too. You may want to set it up and say, oh, it should always occur, you know, maybe second Saturday in April or second Saturday in May, and it should occur yearly, right? And you can also increase maybe the intervals. If you don't want it to happen, maybe every year you want it to happen, you know, every two years, you can do all of that but i will be showing you how to do that from excel vba but i only wanted to show you this so that you kind of see what it is we want to program right it's important to know how to do it manually first of all before you decide to write the codes because i am a little familiar with outlook so some of these things make sense when i look at it in vba but if you've never really set up a meeting or used the recurrence feature yeah it just looks like oh okay what exactly is this guy doing so I decided to show you that so that you kind of understand where this is all headed. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, you know, VBA. Okay, so what we are going to do first of all is we are going to add a variable which is going to be for our recurrence pattern. Currently, we only have a variable for Outlook and for the meeting invite itself. But the recurrence pattern, of course, is going to be attached to the meeting invite. So I'm going to maybe call that, I could just say recall path, something like that. Okay, and I would say Outlook dot um, recurrence pattern. Okay, so I just created a variable, you know, called it um, recall path. Then now maybe I just need to just set it up and say uh, set my recall. You know, you can use control space to auto complete equals to. In this case, it belongs to you know the meeting itself, so it's attached to the meeting or the appointment item which is outmeet so in outmeet you then need a method which is you know get recurrence pattern okay so that's pretty much what it is so just saying that 
you know, get the recurrence pattern, you know, that is attached to this meeting invite. It's interesting though, because right now, if you were to run that, it's going to return nothing absolutely, right? Because you don't yet have, you know, um, a recurrence pattern set up. Then you can then use this to then, you know, set it up. At the end of the day, I would want to also, you know, set that to nothing. So I may just include here, uh, set, you know, recall path to be equals to nothing. Okay, so that I can release those variables at the end of the day. You don't want a situation where you already have, you know, these variables tied to an instance of, you know, maybe the meeting invite, which at the end of the day, if you don't release when you are now making some edits later, it's not a new variable, but still storing some of the previous information. So it's always important when you create the variables at the end of the code runs, you know, then you just include um, what's it called as in a release, so just set them to nothing, okay? So this is everything. The meeting invite will still stay as it should, so we are not changing anything here. The only thing we will now do is to now add what we need for the recurrence. So somewhere down here, I'm just going to include, use a width, because there are a couple of properties of the recurrence pattern that I will want to change. So I can say width recall, I could just select that, right? And I do and what end width, okay? So in here is where I'm now going to play around with some of those properties. And when you look at the properties, they start to make some sense to you. So the first thing is this, just put a dot, you would see the properties and methods you have. You will see that you have a recurrence type. So this is where you select whether you want it to be daily, weekly, monthly, and so on. So now if you do this and say equals two, you can see the options you have, which are very similar to what you saw in Outlook when I uh, pulled it up the other time. So you can see it can be daily, monthly, month end that's like saying let it occur on the nth day of you know this month you can do weekly you can do yearly and you can also do the nth day of this month you know and it, that will occur yearly too so let's start with a very simple one let's assume that it occurs you know daily okay so it, if it occurs daily that's already you know very easy for us right so now the next thing we need to do is to indicate when this is going to start you have your start time and your start date, which are associated with the meeting invite, but you are here setting up when the recurrence pattern should start. So I can have here, I can say pattern start date. So when should this start? Today is 9th of April. I could decide that this should start on, maybe I'll say 11 April. Let me just do that. Say 11 April, 2021. Okay, now, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I thought I was uh, looking at, uh, so that start date, yes. Okay, so then after setting the start date, I can set an end date, right? If I set an end date, of course, Excel will just figure by itself how many occurrences there are. But you need to think about this very well so that you don't create redundant variables, right? Because once two out of these three I'm going to mention are set, the third one is already implied. If I set a pattern start date and I set the number of occurrences, since it knows it's occurring daily, it can figure out where the end date is. So it doesn't make sense to set a start date, an occurrence, and an end date. I hope you get what I'm saying. If I also set a start date and an end date, the number of occurrences is already defined. So I don't need to come back and set that. So I should be using one of the two. So if I say pattern start date is 11th of April 2021, then I can then say maybe number of occurrences. You know, so if I want it to occur a certain number of times, I could say, okay, it's daily. So if I do like what, 700, that means it's going to occur, you know, close to like two years. Okay. So it's going to occur like um, 700 times. That's what, you know, uh, this means. Uh, so let's see. What other thing do we need to include here? Now it's interesting that you would think that, okay, fine, because for the meeting invite, you have set up, you know, a time and you've set up a duration that that's going to apply to the recurrence, you'll be shocked that that doesn't happen. So you have to set, you know, your start time here. So if you don't set your start time, what Outlook is going to do and Excel is that it's just going to use the closest time to where you are now. For example, my time is 4.47, so you could set up the meeting to start by 5. Or maybe I leave it first of all so that we can see, you know, um, what it does. Okay, so now I just want to point out a few things so that we kind of get familiar with what's going on. Um, here, I may not need to do the dot display here. I might want to do the dot display at the end of everything. 
when it has added in the recurrence, then I will say dot display. So let's see if maybe with this we have uh, sufficient information to create the recurrence. So let's just do play. Hopefully there's no error. Okay. So now you can see that it set up the meeting invite, but it didn't add the recurrence. If it added the recurrence, this button here would be, you know, selected just like you have the way for high importance. And what you will see here is you would see a breakdown of what the recurrence pattern is. So you can see that this is where you can now say make recurring. It hasn't set up anything. All it has in here are just, so to say, is defaults. Okay. So why didn't that work? For one simple reason, very interesting. Sometimes you need to play around to figure this out. If you don't save that calendar invite, you are never able to add the recurrence. So what you need to do, first of all, is before you display, you have to do what? A save. So when you save, you know, the meeting invite, because you notice that this dot save is attached to this out meet. That is where it is, right? It's outside this width block for this block here is the block for the recurrence, right? So it's outside of it. So when you save the meeting invite itself, then you get the recurrence pattern. So let's now run this again with the dot save. I decided to do it that way so that you can learn that bit. Okay, so now do you see that there's a difference? The recurrence is now selected and you can see the description of the recurrence. It says occurs every day. That's because you chose daily. Effective from what? 1104, you know, until it figures out the last date. It has counted 700 occurrences and it says it's going to end in what? 2023. And see what it did. It set the meeting to start at 5 and end by 5.30. Why? Because my time right now is 4.49 p.m. That's the closest, you know, as in time it feels that you can start. And it also sets it to 30 minutes, which means that what? It means that it did not honor my duration here, which would be 90 minutes. Neither did it honor my start here. So those two things are things that you need to fix in the recurrence itself. So you need to do start time now. Let's put a start time and say, I want this to start. Let me choose a different time, you know, just so that it's clear that we're we are doing, you know, the right thing. So I could just do uh, 19 oh, so that's 7 p.m., right? And I could do duration. This time I'm, I'm going to do something a little different from what I have. Let's do 45 minutes, you know, just so we can see what's going on. Okay, so now let's run this again. Okay, so now you see it's going to start at 7 p.m. and it's going to end at 7.45 and the other things are there you can click edit recurrence to see the selection so you can see it's occurring daily every one day right and you can see the stats you can see the number of occurrences which it's selected here right like i said if you select that you don't need to put an end date for your recurrence because it's going to figure that out now let's do something else what if we don't want it to happen every day we want it to happen maybe every other day there's also um a property for that that property is called interval okay so when you say interval interval when you're working with in this case you know a daily recurrence if you set this to two it means it's not going to occur every day it's going to occur every two days so let's run this and see one thing i really like is this description for the recurrence it tells you already what it is you are doing it says occurs every two days effective you know 11th of um you know april all the way that way if you go to edit recurrence you can see that here it says it occurs daily every two days okay so that's how you use you know that variable so those are like the key variables that you really need if you are setting up what a daily recurrence it gets a little more interesting as you go into you know some other type of um you know um recurring so maybe i will just look at one more in this video and then i will break it up and continue you know look at some of the other ones in some other videos because there are one or two other properties that i feel are very important okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this from daily i'm going to change this to weekly so let's go back so we can get our intelligence okay so this is saying it recalls weekly okay when does it start it starts you know, same date, we can still do that. We can still do interval. We can still set these occurrences the way we want it. There's only one thing I want you to notice. Today is actually 9th, 
So I'm setting up this meeting to start on the, uh, what's it called, the 11th, right? So today is um, Friday, so this meeting should actually be on Sunday and it should occur, um, you know, weekly that way. So let's see what this setup is going to give us. Let's just press play at this point without changing much. Okay, so now what did it say? It says occurs every two weeks on Friday, right? Which is today, but really I want this to start you know, on Sunday. So here's a problem, right? What Excel does is it just sets it up, you know, using the current day. So as you can see here now, it has checked Friday for me, right? Because I didn't indicate to it, you know, what day of the week I wanted it to start on, even though I have indicated a pattern start date. So it's interesting. These properties gets very interesting, but the more you do it, the more you get familiar with it. So what do you do about that? I'm going to do something interesting, which is going to use a property called the day of week. Look at this day of week mask. When I say day of week mask, see the options I have. I can now select the day I actually want. So if you don't select this property, it's going to default to the current day. And it's going to use that to set it up. So let's use Sunday, for example. Okay. And let's see what happens. So we are going to do play. Okay. So now you see it occurs every two weeks on Sunday, effective from what? 11. So you can see if you go to edit occurrences, then you can see that it is, uh, you know, set to Sunday. So that's something, you know, very interesting. That you can actually do with it there's something else you can do which i need to just test let's see that if you want it to occur on more than one day so if you want it to occur on more than one day say you want it to occur on sunday and tuesday you can just put an or here so when you put an or you can then select the other day. you can select like three four days i mean as much as you want but let's just do two days i want it to occur on sunday and on tuesday let's see if this is going to work be mindful, this property doesn't work for all recurrence patterns, but let's see if it works for um, weekly. Okay. All right. So it says occurs every two weeks on Sunday and Tuesday. It says the effective date and it also states, you know, the number of occurrences. So you see, right. And it tells you when that's going to end. So two weeks and it now has Sunday checked and, you know, Tuesday check so it gets really really interesting but i would um talk about monthly and yearly are not so different i will talk about them in um, the next video and i also talk about you know doing something on the end maybe instance like say the fourth sunday the fourth tuesday of every month or if it occurs that way in a yearly pattern and you know you can have that reoccurring in subsequent years so that's what we'll talk about in the next video but i hope this has given you a good foundation on you know how to set up the recurrence pattern it's not difficult really once you know how it works front end is easy to you know work on those properties back end and it doesn't really have a lot of properties if you kind of look at them um, you know just if you take a look here you can see they're not they're not really a lot of properties a few methods but yeah they're not really a lot so it's kind of easy to uh you know to get familiar with it okay so um this is where we'll draw the curtain on this i would say first video on recurrence pattern for meetings uh, if you like the video please do well to hit the like button you can also share with your friends and most importantly you need to subscribe to the channel excel moments for more awesome don't say i said so you can see it for yourself more awesome content like this so for now i'm out